neighbor, how's it going? Wanted to clear my head on something that's been kind of floating around throughout this unlimited love cycle that sees John Frusciante, the in-and-out guitarist of the Red Hot Chili Peppers, returning to the band for his third stint overall. He's walked away several times for various reasons, and I've really been enjoying not only the album itself, if you didn't see my review of that, then tap the card on screen because I thoroughly enjoyed it and that goes into a lot more detail, but I've also just really enjoyed consuming all of the podcasts, the interviews that the band have been doing because they get very thoughtful answers from the Anthony Kiedis interview with Zane Lowe to Flea talking to a few people to the Howard Stern performance and interview and also the Rick Rubin Broken Record podcast series that he's been doing with each member of the band. It's been great to dive into that as a longtime fan. They're one of my favorite bands of all time, in fact. But the Red Hot Chili Peppers seem to have forgotten something. And it's not just them. I think it's so many of the fans as well. It's the fact that Josh Klinghoffer was an important anchor for that band. And without him, I don't know how well they would have fared during the 2010s with those albums away because what a lot of people fail to recognize is that Josh Klinghoffer was friends with John Frusciante long before he joined the Red Hot Chili Peppers even in a touring capacity. I think that started in 2007 but it's time with John Frusciante went back to 2002. He was helping John, he was a session musician, he was working on John's solo records alongside him, and I feel like, if you'll allow, I guess, the really silly pun, John took him under his heavy wing, and then they kind of floated together in this ethereal space where Josh became a part of the Chili Peppers, toured with them for Stadium Arcadium, and eventually replaced John after he stepped away in 2009. The albums that they recorded together, I'm With You and The Getaway, are vastly different from each other. And I think a lot of people like to call out Josh and say, Oh, God, thank God, John Frusciante's back in the band. Which, obviously, I'm super incredibly excited too. But I have to put one of their own asterisk logos on there because I feel that Josh's playing style just because it was different doesn't mean that it wasn't exciting or invigorating or just great in its own way, very groovy and vibable. I feel that he had a ton of chemistry with the band, and although it may be true that they weren't really feeling it for the third album that they were trying to record with Josh Klinghoffer in the band, I just feel that he gets so unfairly shit on, dismissed, and called boring because he has a different style that maybe didn't line up with the other band members or even a producer like Rick Rubin, who notoriously has a very hands-off reputation when it comes to production, however he sees fit. In fact, other bands like Slipknot, Corey Taylor, have complained about Rick Rubin, saying that they wouldn't work with him again. And while I have a lot of respect for Rick and the albums that he's worked on, I get that it could be really frustrating for a musician that is wanting you to push them forward, and that's why I'm With You maybe didn't turn out as great as it could have been. I feel that that album is overlooked just like John is, though, as is The Getaway. It's unfairly dismissed as just snooze music, it's background noise, and some people will say that about anything. They're even saying it about Unlimited Love. But something that I feel is truly unfair is that John Frusciante seems, for whatever reason, for somebody who goes way back with Josh, this wasn't just some rando that replaced you in the Chili Peppers while you were away before you decided to finally float your way back to the band. It seems that he's so unwilling to compromise on not playing anybody else's material, and that doesn't sit right with me for some reason. Now, obviously, a ton of respect and a ton of love and power goes out to John just being in this universe again. I'm very excited, but I wish there was a world where, once again, they could coexist in some capacity with maybe Josh doing other keyboard parts or drums or whatever the hell he needs to do. It's clear that he's talented as a multi-instrumentalist, and I just really find myself shaking my head at the fans who get so up in arms when it comes to Josh. Josh's tenure in that group. And I completely forgot to say this, but also, Josh has never hesitated to play John Frusciante material and even
even the stuff from One Hot Minute, which was Dave Navarro. Definitely not stuff that he wrote, and he never had a problem playing it, so it feels a little strange that John seems so unwilling. It's clear that the Chili Peppers obviously have this bond that is going to last forever with John Frusciante. The door is always going to be open, and it's like an old partner, and you're like, oh, they're gonna get back together with their ex, aren't they? Oh, yep, there it comes. So, in a way, I'm sure that Josh was definitely preparing himself for that inevitable demise and his departure, but at the same time, it felt so abrupt for him to just get fired in like 2019, and they're like, hey everyone, John is back in the band for Shante all over again. And obviously, it's so exciting, and I don't want to rain on anybody's parade here because I'm such a huge fan of both of these guitarists. In fact, I probably like John's work even more, but that doesn't mean that I'm not going to go to bat for Josh Klinghoffer. For as talented as this man is, he was so young when he joined the Chili Peppers. He was in his 20s. He's 42 years old now. He's doing incredible stuff now with Pearl Jam and Eddie Vedder and also his solo project Plur Alone, which I've really been getting into. To, I highly recommend that you guys go check it out. I just hate the fact that it feels like, I don't know, even though he's landing on his feet, doesn't it feel like justice wasn't necessarily carried out? It's like his name is always going to be associated with this era of the Chili Peppers, that people just, oh, we forget about that. We don't talk about that like we don't talk about One Hot Minute. And then John Frusciante seems unwilling to budge on this I don't play other people's songs thing. And uh, I guess I get that a little bit at least. But you walked away for more than a decade this time. And it seems like he's never going to play these tracks live. He dodges around the answers. He doesn't specifically say Josh's name. And the interviews just seem a little bit awkward only on that front where they kind of tiptoe around the Josh subject. It's interesting because obviously he's back in the band. This is huge news. But at the same time, you've been gone for so long. And when he came back for like Californication, by the way, Stadium Arcadium, he obviously didn't play those one hot minute tracks. And with nothing having been on the set list from I'm With You or The Getaway thus far for the Chili Peppers, it doesn't look like anything is gonna get played when it comes to the stadium run that they're doing throughout 2022. I want to pass the question over to you guys, because maybe I'm overthinking this. What do you think about Josh Klinghoffer? Do you think that he gets enough respect and love and praise? Was he just so-so or average? Because I truly don't see that to be the case. I just think maybe, I guess, the Chili Peppers wasn't the right fit for his creative strides. And I do feel that he has a lot of them. I feel that the getaway was even better than I'm With You. You could really hear his guitar parts, his writing, his backing vocals. I mean, he did it all, really, just like for Shante. He just didn't get the credit for carrying a lot of that load on his back like John does. So let me know you guys' thoughts in the comment section down below. I'm very curious to hear from you. I'm going to be doing an episode of I Got It Wrong very soon on the album I'm With You. Kind of looking back at my old review, kind of making fun of it, kind of giving some updated thoughts. But anyways, other than that, some recent Chili Peppers videos on screen now. And I'll be back soon with more on Beyond ARTV.